I can tell you every single outfit I have worn every single day of 2023 so far because I am literally tracking every single thing that I wear every single day this year. And I think you should do it too. Let's talk about documenting your outfits. I accidentally started documenting my outfits at my last internship, which was at the Vans headquarters. On the first day of my internship, I took a silly selfie with my leg like high in the air. After my first week, I shared a roundup of my outfits on my Instagram stories. I just thought it was funny to take a bathroom selfie and try to show my shoes every single day. And after the first week, I was committed to the bit. So, so I did that every single day for my summer internship and I ended up working at Vans part-time from August until May or April. Throughout that time, I think I took a hundred fit check pictures. That job ended and therefore my outfit tracking ended when the pandemic started. So I put that on pause for a few years, but I learned so much from that experience. And this year I'm really trying to learn a lot more about my personal style and learn more about my consumption habits and try to be a smarter sustainable shopper. So I decided starting January 1st of 2023 that I was gonna track my outfits every single day. This time around, I've gone into it with a few goals of what I wanna learn from the process. Sustainable fashion starts with the clothes that are in your closet. So having a really good idea of what I own and what I wear, I think will really set me up to continue on in my personal slow fashion journey and also be able to talk about it more realistically with all y'all on the internet. I want to learn about my personal style and what it actually looks like based on what I'm wearing and not just, oh, I think that's cute, I think that's cute. I did a video last week all about my closet audit and my spreadsheet that has every single item of clothing in my closet on there. <laughs> I'm using that spreadsheet to track all the items that I wear. And while it's good to know what you have in your closet, it's even more helpful, I think, to know what you're actually wearing from your closet. I'm not trying to have a capsule wardrobe. I'm not trying to be a minimalist because I just love fashion. And I think that takes the fun out of it, at least for me. I admire people that can do that. I simply cannot. But I do want to narrow down my closet just because I have a lot of clothes. I also want to look at the cost per wear of the items in my closet. That's something that you need, the data points of how often you are wearing something to be able to calculate. One of my TikTok friends, Blonde Broken Bougie, talks all the time about the cost per wear of her items. She's been tracking this data for a long, long time. So she's partly who inspired me to restart this journey of documenting what I wear. Cost per wear, I think, is something we don't talk about enough in the sustainable fashion world, especially if you're going to be investing a significant amount of money into a piece of clothing, which is what you do if it's sustainably and ethically made. Cost per wear is a helpful metric to look at before you buy, but also to evaluate the purchases that you have made so that you can buy smarter in the future. So that's why I've embarked on this process of tracking what I wear every single day. <laughs> Today is May 24th, day 144 of the year. 2023. So I have quite a bit of data that I'm working with after tracking my outfits all this time. Here are some of the really interesting things that I've learned so far. There are a few items that I wear constantly. One of them being these jeans that I'm wearing right now. I got these jeans secondhand at Crossroads. They're Levi's. They're the kind of jeans that I wouldn't have bought new for a variety of reasons. These I was able to try on and get with credit from clothes that I had sold at Crossroads. So free but not really free. I had no idea I wore these jeans constantly. Let me look at my spreadsheet. But yeah, these are the second most worn item of clothing in my closet. I've worn them 39 times so far this year, and it's only day 144 of the year. That's impressive. The next item of clothing that I wear all the time is a black crop t-shirt. I have a ton of t-shirts in my closet, but I didn't think I wore them very often, and that's because I just wear this one, black, plain black t-shirt. I've worn it 22 times so far this year, which again is a lot of times considering it's only the 144th day of the year. So I've learned that even though there are like 300 something items in my closet, there are a few items, a handful, that I wear constantly. And those are the staples in my closet. Now I have the actual data to be like, these are the items that I actually wear the most. Something else that was more interesting that I didn't expect to learn was I gravitate more towards muted colors versus bright colors. I love a fun pattern, I love a bright color, but I just don't wear that very often. But for a long time when I would go shopping, especially thrift shopping, I gravitate towards the things that are bright and fun and unique. And I would get confused and think that just because I thought it was so fun and cute that I needed it in my closet and that I would wear it. But really it was just really fun and cute to look at. 
and not necessarily something I would wear. So I've made a few edits in my closet that I think have made a lot of sense. I've been dyeing a lot of clothes. I had one printed red top that kind of was like a bandana-ish pattern and it was just too bright and if I wore it with blue jeans, which I almost always wear blue, like these blue jeans probably, it felt like a little too red, white, and blue, just like didn't love the vibe. So I had it for almost a year and never wore it. But I loved the way that it fit. I loved the style. I just didn't love the color. I thought it was gonna dye it a whole solid color, but really it just made it a more muted version of the pattern and the color. And I love it. Uh, it's the same exact top, same exact pattern, still a red top, but it fits more with the color scheme that I feel comfortable wearing and gravitate towards. So it works with a lot more items in my closet. I had a bright red exercise skirt from Girlfriend Collective. Love Girlfriend Collective. I have two exercise skirts, black and white, that I wear constantly. And I thought it would be fun to have a color. I had that skirt for nearly a year in my closet and I never wore it. Uh, but I was wearing my black and white skirts all the time. So it told me that it wasn't the style of the item, it was the color. Found a very similar exercise skirt from Pact, another sustainable brand that was in a kind of dusty rose color. And that just came in the mail a few weeks ago and I'm so excited about it once the weather warms up. It's something I can see myself pairing with literally almost everything in my closet versus the red felt like it could only pair with items that had a little bit of red in it. I don't know, just didn't fit with my personal style. Learning about the colors that I gravitate toward and allows me to have a closet that serves me in my personal style. And on that note, I just all the information that I track has helped me make more mindful, decisions uh, in terms of purchasing and what I add to my closet. So I think we all remember the big Birkenstock, Boston clogs, rise to fame that happened a few months ago. I thought that I wanted them, but I've had Birkenstocks in the past. They're definitely comfortable, but I didn't feel like the Bostons would fit in my closet and with what I wore. They felt a little bit too casual, but I don't have any casual kind of slip on mule clog type shoes. And I liked the idea of having something like that in my closet that I could just throw on and go, kind of would go with everything. We're casual, but not too casual. And so I found these. These are Doc Martens. They have an adjustable thing, so it can be a mule or it could be a slingback, like a slip-on shoe. I like that the sole is sturdier and that the suede doesn't go all the way down. Like if I'm walking around and it's kind of wet out from the dew, I don't have to worry so much about the suede. The sole is super sturdy. It's gonna last for a really long time. It's not gonna get run down like Birkenstock soles do for me at least. And these feel like a little bit more timeless. I got these 12 days ago. I've already worn them six times. That to me is a sign of a good investment. It's something I'm wearing a lot. They're fitting in very naturally with kind of the gap that I had in my closet that I could recognize from looking at what I was wearing. And there's something I'm gonna wear and enjoy for a really long time. And this is a perfect example, which maybe I'll talk about in a different video, of knowing your personal style and adjusting trends to that or knowing what trends are worthwhile investing in. I very easily could have got the Boston clogs instead of these, but I waited a number of months. I know that even once these are like not cool to be wearing anymore, I will still be wearing them and they still have a good place in my closet. Okay, so what does actually tracking my outfits look like on a daily basis? I have a spreadsheet. I can give you a little tour through my spreadsheet. In my last video, I talked about doing a closet audit, which is the process of getting all of the items that are in your closet into a spreadsheet. That is what I did before I started tracking my outfits. I will go in once a day, normally in the morning after I get dressed, and just log what I'm wearing. Today's date is May 24th. I am wearing my Levi's ripped knee blue jeans. Brown and white swirl sweater top. White linen button down. Doc Martin fling back mules. All that information in that spreadsheet from the pull down lists get tallied into a column that counts how many times I've worn that item this year. If I wear two different outfits in one day, I add another row, put the same date and add my outfit. Like sometimes half a day I'll wear sweat shorts and a matching sweatshirt and the other half of the day I'll wear like a real outfit. If I have an outfit that I wear during the day and then I go out at night for something more formal, I log both of those outfits. I've also kind of gotten in the habit of taking a picture of my outfit before I leave the house or like once I went out and got back at like one in the morning and for forgot to document what I was wearing in my spreadsheet. So I took a quick picture, but I have that photo to look back on the next day or the next time that I'm looking at 
my spreadsheet so that I can log all the information. There are a lot of different ways to document your outfits. So here are some of the ways that you can make it work for you. In terms of items to include, you can be as detailed or as like high level as you want to. You can track every single accessory that you wear, your jewelry, sunglasses, shoes, all of that. Or you can just track the actual items of clothing that you're wearing. I all the time get asked like, do you actually get dressed every single day? No. If you don't put on a real outfit every day or you spend a lot of time in your pajamas, you don't wanna track that. Don't. Skip the day, don't track the outfit. Just have a like item in your audit that's called pajama day and you just log that. <laughs> so you can track how many pajama days you're having if you want to. If you only wanna look at what you're wearing to work, do that like I did at Vans. If you only wanna document what you're wearing in your free time or when you go out, you can do that. If you like the idea of a spreadsheet, but you don't want to have to do a whole audit beforehand where you write down every single item of clothing that you own, you can track things as you wear them. Start off with a blank closet spreadsheet, and if I wear this today, I add the items to my list and then I log them as being worn. And let's say tomorrow I wear the same shirt and the same pants, but a different jacket. I will add that jacket to my list of items of clothing and log that as being worn. I think it's easier just to go through it all at once, but not everybody has the time or patience to do that. I understand that not everybody loves spreadsheets as much as I do. I'll get over it someday, <laughs> but you don't have to have a spreadsheet. If you just wanna see what items you're wearing in your closet, you can turn the hangers around once you've worn something. So have all the hangers facing backwards, and once you wear an item, face it forward. So after a month or two months, you can look at the hangers in your closet and see generally what percentage of items have been worn. You could take them out into different piles or organize them into different parts of your closet. You could just take pictures of your outfit like I did when I was working at Vans. Save them to an album in your phone or a Instagram story highlight so that you can go back and look through all of them. That way you can still look for trends in terms of colors or like silhouettes or outfit formulas that you wear really often. You won't have the exact numbers and everything that you have if you track it in a spreadsheet the way I do, but not everybody needs that. There are also apps that can help you do this. There are apps where you can take pictures of all the items in your closet. It'll suggest outfits for you. It'll tell you how many of each item you have. Again, that's another process, but if you're a more visual person, you could do that versus having a spreadsheet. There's a lot of ways that you can make it your own. I do have some resources if this is something you're interested in doing, but don't quite know where to start. Definitely watch my video from last week about what a closet audit is, how to do one, what mine looks like. That'll set you up really well to decide what you wanna track and how you wanna track it. I have a cost per wear or like outfit tracking spreadsheet template available on my website. It's the exact same template that I use to track my outfits every day. I've added way more like information and columns and things just because I like having data. But you can start with something really simple like the template that I have. If you want more of a guided process, I definitely recommend my ebook. It's called Make the Most of What's in Your Closet. It's a, about starting or continuing your slow fashion journey with the clothes that are already in your closet. It's about tracking what you wear, doing a closet audit, thinking about what fits into your personal style and what doesn't quite fit, deciding what clothes to keep or part with. It's a good resource if you want a little bit of a virtual hand to hold through the process. And I talk a lot about this all on my other social media. So Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I definitely think that this is something everybody should do, even if it's just for a short amount of time or kind of as a social experiment. There's a lot you can learn, I think especially these days with the prevalence of fast fashion and social media and micro nano trends, all these things, it's so important to really think about your personal style and get a good grip on that so that you aren't spending a ton of money on things that you're not actually gonna wear and make purchases that make sense for you in your closet. Thank you.